So now we're just going to because we have we have some previews. Um, I know we did we, we did a, a preview for one of the 29th cards, which was Haney and Linares. But there's another one on Showtime, and this is one of the ones where again this is another one that's flying under the radar that has the potential to be fade worthy. Yeah, um, because we're we're uh, we're seeing if you know a certain Hall of Famer will uh, you know turn back the hands of time again, continue to defy old age. Yes, and of course we're talking about none other than oh, the Filipino. My God. Then also we're talking about none other than the Filipino Flash, Nonino Donaire, who again who we going to re- trying to regain the a bantamweight title, a, a portion of the bantamweight title against uh, WBC Bantamweight champion Nordine Oboli. Now, the last time we seen Donaire out, you know, he fought in 2019's fight of the year. Now, I know people are like, well, why is why the, why is that the fight of the year? Why isn't it Porter and Spence? Or whatever, blah, 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 blah. You know, 2019, first of all, was a year of great fights. It was spectacular fights. You know, yeah, but a lot it, of fucking fight the year. That, that's one of those years where if you could pick anything from the top five fight of the year and no one should really argue like that, like yeah. you should be good. But for some reason, it seemed like most people just didn't we'll, we'll sort of understand why was Monster and Donaire fight of the year. Like, like did you watch that fight? Like, I mean, like, like me and LB watched, we watched that shit in the morning. We actually got up and watched, and we watched live. Was, like, we watched that shit live. And good lord, that, that fight was a war. Like, I mean, that, that, it's the whole like, event, the card, the yeah. damn his little brother fighting first. It's just the whole fucking thing. Like, it, it, I'm, I'm like those camera on posts on Instagram. Like that, the hashtag. Of it. Yeah. You wasn't there. Like, if you wasn't there, you wouldn't feel it. You wouldn't know how we would feel about this. You wouldn't see hit, hit history hit at that moment. So, I mean, you're kind of like we can't even we can't even brag about this shit. Like, if niggas weren't there, they ain't gonna know. <laughs> Yeah, like that shit was a high speed chess match. Like, I mean, I've never seen so much, so many clean, violent shots. I mean, that, that shit was a clinic in violent combination punching. Like, it, good lord. Like, high level boxing and punching. Yeah. Like, you don't see that that often. Like, and the aggression was there. You was have to throw a gazillion punches to make a dramatic, intense fight. Yeah, no, that was a high pace. Like it was, it was a fucking good fight, great fight. Like that, that that's yeah, all it is. And I hope Donaire could still bring that to this fight. Yeah, and and think that's I think that's the biggest question because Donaire took enough punishment to he should retire. Like I I said, like I mean, it was a go, it was a goat level fight. But I, the fact that the the level of punishment that Donaire took was was still like startling. Like you know, he took some really clean shots from a from a from a from a high level puncher, another high level puncher. And got dropped in the process too. So, but then I think he's probably had the benefit of a long layoff because I know he, he was supposed to fight Oboli last year, but you know, COVID kind of KO'd that. So it's just like now he's, you know, he's he's a lot older. He's what he's thirty seven or thirty eight now. Donaire, thirty seven. Yeah. So Donaire and Oboli is not. He's, he's not. I mean, Oboli. Although he's not. I mean, he, if you're a hardcore, you, you've seen him fight before. But he's not a walk in the park. Like I mean. Hell nah, El- Obali is skilled as fuck. Yeah, the I fuck? mean, I, like, yeah, we, might I, see, we might see him style on Donaire, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just keep it, keep it real. He might style yeah, on Donaire. The potential is there for him to do that, but I just think Donaire a little too versatile for him, and I don't know if he's gonna be able to handle Donaire power, especially power before Donaire gets in his rhythm. But I yeah, think he's gonna be, I think he's gonna be conscious of that though, and I, I think, I think he's gonna prepare for that. It's gonna be a good fight, a real good fight. Yeah, because I mean, he's gonna be conscious of it, and we get like a, a Magdaleno type of fight, or he's gonna be conscious of it, and we get like a Frampton type of fight, Daenerys type. I'm sorry, Frampton uh, monster type of fight towards Daenerys, like with somebody who really kind of out, try to really outbox him and beat him type shit, not just lay back and you know, hopefully his plot armor could do the rest of the work. Absolutely. Yeah, and Oboli, like I said, I mean, as as LB mentioned before, Oboli was on that undercard for Monster and Donaire. Like he's the one that actually beat Monster's brother. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah. And but then Mon- as official score of boxing said, yeah, he was like Oboe Ob- was actually hurt by Monster's brother in that fight. You know, Facts. Was, you know so I mean, Oboe, and then obviously he won his title by beating Rashid Warren, who's probably you know I mean. Yeah, I mean, Rushy Warren is another uh, is is something of an amateur disappointment. In the bust, bust. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I can't call him that because dude became world champion at an advanced stage, especially being at the lower weights and being in the Olympics twice. Mm-hmm. Maybe he underachieved. Yeah. But- but- yeah, I can't call him no bust. <laughs> yeah, it, his problem is he just stayed in the amateurs too long, and you know. Yeah, you know, it, it, you know, and at, at, at that weight class, yeah. that's that's not really the right move to do, man. And, and, and he's uh, gonna affect bigger fighters. And, and unfortunately for him, like you know, one fifteen and one eighteen are monster classes for him. Like I mean, those are those are dangerous classes, you know. Yeah. So like they they have they have killers in both divisions. So it's like. He's stuck in a hard place. Like he has to be, he has to move. Like I mean, his test yeah, He can hang good. with, he can hang with most boxers too. So I'll never write him off. You know, he, yeah, he makes for good fights, quick hands. Yeah, but I mean, but like I said, Obley was able to beat him and like dominate him. So like Obley, like Obley, this is Obley chance to, if he wants to put a legendary fighter into retirement for Donaire, it'll be another chance for him to, to to turn back the hands of time and you know see if they can he can actually win another title at an advanced age. Um, so they called out Monster and be like, I got your Monster, brother. Yes. I yes. got, I got, them. I got your best win. I got your brother. You want it next? Because yeah. I feel like this is like the um, uh, a, con- a consolation prize card we getting for these two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did do, Boca for soccer? I just happened to saw that he, uh, you know, he just uh, he came in. What did do? It's gang, gang. <laughs> I've never seen this before, so this has actually caught me off guard. So, yeah, what up? <laughs> that's, that's, nah, y'all know who that is, man. I know who it is. I've just never seen that notification before. Yeah, I never yeah, no, did either. Like, it, it got big. I don't know what the fuck that yeah, happened. Yeah, like, you know, that's me. Yeah, I, I, did, I did that. I actually clicked on it. I clicked on his name. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Yeah. And I was, you, see, you added extra special effects and shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't know it would do that. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so I kept that. Uh, my bad. You know, it looks like, uh, like Mateus is fighting too. He, against yeah, another yeah. undefeated guy. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I mean, well, before we get into that one, like for for Donier and Obey. So, um, actually, since Pilot, since you spoke up, what do you? Who do you think will probably win that fight? <sighs> I'm probably gonna roll with uh, Obey. I just think Donier's a you know. Legend, great fighter, but I just think the youth will will carry him, and it'll be a tough fight. But I think Oblero. Yeah, and honestly, that's and honestly, that's not that's not a bad po- that's not a bad uh, viewpoint to make. Cause like I said, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean we've seen Donaire lose to people that we don't think should, he should have lost to, like Magdaleno, or we or him actually struggling with Cesar Juarez, that which was even more surprising. Oh my, was, God. that was a fucking war, man. Yo, yeah, you ain't seen that Donaire Cesar Juarez fight. Watch that fucking fight. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was a good fight. Yeah, yeah Donair yeah, Donair has had plenty of wars, but then it's the wars that he's supposed to have with people that is that are not on his level. Those are the ones that are kind of shocking. <laughs> but I, don't know, I think Donair is hungry though. Like he he really been wanting to fight. Like there's something like I don't know, man. He he's from the he's from fucking the Philippines, man, with Pacquiao. Like yeah, them cool. dudes ain't different, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, Donaire is built different. Like, I mean, you know, he was the first, you know, he was first fired to be, you know, to be testing clean regularly and reporting that shit. Like, so there was no bullshit. There was no fuckery in terms of, you know, what the hell he was doing. You know, if he was, uh, if he had, you know, if he has PD system because his left hook was just like annihilating cats. None of that bullshit, you know. But, I mean, he may be motivated, but unfortunately, father time does hit. And it, you, you just never know when it's going to hit. So I mean that. But well, you gotta be able to hit Father Tom back too, though. I mean, he could he could still hit. That's that's the one. That's, that's the one thing I say about Donier. I mean, I think I feel like I've always said that about Donier. On the outside of the ring, he looks like he looks like Peter Parker. Inside, he fights like Spider Man. <laughs> nah, he fight like Venom. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> <Venom, Venom. laughs> Ao Aop. So, how, who do you think will probably win between Donier and Oberly? 
I think it's going to be Oberly. I think that, you know, I think Donaire still has something in him. I think he'll have his moments. You might, I might even see him hurt Oberly, but I think Oberly is just going to be the, the more busier, accurate, sharper fighter. And I think he's going to, he's going to win in a, in a good fight, close, close fight, but I'm picking Oberly, uh, 116, 112. Type type. Yeah, so both y'all think it's picking Oberly? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, LB, so what, what about you, bro? Man, I don't know. It seemed like this is a year the old nigga for me, so... Um, <laughs> I, I gotta go with my boy, Denair. Like, I rarely pick against him. I think I've only picked against him in the fucking... Um, the monster fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like he, every person he's fought, he's had the opportunity to beat, or he shows that... Um, <clears throat> he's on the level where... He had the chance. He just had bad strategy, whatnot. Um, matter of fact, like during the Taylor Ramirez fight, that uppercut knockdown. I don't know why, it's for some reason, I thought about the the, the Nair Rigandal knockdown <laughs> off that quick little break shit. But yeah, um, yeah. I feel like the Nair. I think the Nair got this. Uh, Obali ain't the damn youngest dude out either. It's quick, he, he got skills, but. If my little brother can hang with him for so long, <laughs> mm-hmm. heard him take rounds, you know, I think Denair, I think Denair got him, man. I almost don't know if it'll be decision or anything, but if not, I think Denair might even knock his ass out. Fuck it. I think Denair hungry, he wants his shit. Denair by knockout. Yeah, I mean, Donaire definitely, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, and I agree with you on that one. I mean, I do think Donaire, I mean, I don't, for some reason, I, I'm not, I can't see a knockout. I mean, I think Donnie will probably win by decision. I mean, Oberly is pretty fucking crafty. You know what I mean? He's the I mean, he is, but man, look. The way these scorecards be, look, if you a boxer and you throw hands, I don't care if you just throw hands in the middle of the street. World star yeah. shit. You better go for that fucking knockout. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, I mean, it's not, I mean, I, I, one thing I'll never question is Donnie's killer instinct. Donnie has a mean killer instinct. You know, even, you know, as as much of a good guy as he is, like dude will do will hurt you if you're not yeah, careful. Yeah. We seen Denier get faded the fuck up and knock guys out. Yeah, that damn dog, that Darchinian rematch, he was losing that shit. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what uh, his mind wasn't right or whatever. Like, I mean, when dude, when dude, had, I mean, that was one of those fights. I was just like, man, like you better not lose this fight to no damn. 122 version of Vic Darchinian or 122 version or whatever version it was. Either way, it was not a prime Vic Darchinian version. <laughs> a guy you beat seven years earlier? Yeah, by a violent knockout. You know, like, well, you nah. better not lose it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, uh, PJ, what do you think? If you're still on. Um, For a lefty-righty matchup, I just got to quickly just take a look and just see like uh, some of his Obali's uh, previous fights, including the one with against uh, Takuma. From what I'm watching and from what I've seen, I'm also leaning a little bit to Donaire being able to actually pull something off. But it's only because of a couple of factors. While Ubali is like a crafty and decent boxer, he leaves himself wide open by accident. I'm not too sure if it's just because of habit or is it just because it's just because of how much he uses his in and out strategy? Donaire has seen a lot of those things before, but the problem I have with Donaire is uh, it takes him a really long time to get going now. And yeah. my problem is, is he yeah. going to be able to pull the upset coming from coming from behind, or will he be able to like get something going right off the bat? But I'm going to lean towards uh, Nonito for this one by decision. All right. So three, so three for Donaire, two for Oberly. Damn! So all the old niggas picked Donaire, and all the young cats picked. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay, uh, let me get my official dentures. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean, it, Damn, like, I, 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 I mean, every, 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 God but damn! Hang Lundy could damn, <laughs> could hang tough. Chocolatito turned the damn clock back twice. Hey, you oh, know, fucking Chris else? Ariola turning the hand, you know, turning Ariola to Sora shit. Like, yo, this the year the damn um fucking old dudes. Well, they I mean, saw Pavi and they were days. like, we can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, but at least Donaire, at least Donaire is more. Uh, 
you know, I think I mean Donair has something in the tank. It's, we just don't know how much left. So I mean, it should be this should definitely be a, a good damn fight. And the coma can hurt his defense with Donair. Like he might be slower to pull the trigger, but he still pulls that bitch. Yeah, and when yeah. he pulls it and he lands it, he can still fuck you up. Like just the. Uh, yeah, they just wear tear like faces and shit. Like like he just punched too fucking hard. Like nah, I'm I good. mean. I mean, I mean, just because Monster took, I mean, Monster has fighting spirit, and you know, Japanese fighters, they have fighting spirit, so just because Monster could take that type of shit, doesn't mean anyone else should take that type of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if you're not naturally bigger than him, like like Walter was, and Walter's damn near got knocked out, people forget yeah. that. Yeah, exactly, and Walter's got stunned, but then, and then once he recovered, you know, he... You know, he brutalized Donaire. Remember, I think the round ended. Like, that's how he got stunned at the right time. Yeah, exactly. Like, I know people bring up the uh, Madonna when he stunned um, Lloyd in the rematch. Mm-hmm. But it was that type of punch. But, like, but, but, like two times worse. Because, like, Walters looked like he was done. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, Walters did a dance. And Floyd did, just like, took a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit, like, oh, yeah, I got yeah a there's a difference between it. yeah there's a difference between like take a shot you're like okay that was way harder than I thought and then you didn't expect it and now your legs are telling you why you're here <laughs> and then official scorecard said if Donaire wasn't forced to win to wear winning instead of Cleto Reyes he may have stopped Monster I mean I didn't even know that Cleto Reyes yeah, he's some puncher puncher yeah but winning horse hair yeah fun. you don't fuck around with that yeah, but winning gloves are puncher gloves. Like they're elite punching gloves. No, nah, they they are, they are. But then sometimes it depends on what they feel. So I mean, he said possibly. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I would say just fight gloves in general. They're just too small at that point for you to consider. Like, oh, these are pillows versus anything else. They still well, need I to mean, hurt you. Yeah, I mean, for that, I mean, obviously, I mean, don't, I mean, aren't anything under one four seven? Is, aren't they supposed to wear uh, eight ounce gloves anyways? I mean, eight ounce, yeah. yeah, so. So if anything, at that point, it's really based on the padding for your hands, not the person's face. Right, and in Donair, even with those Reyes is on, like dude still broke an orbital and all caused all types of damage on Monster's face. So it wasn't like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was still like it wasn't like it, it didn't matter anyway. Donair yeah, was on Monster's face. face wasn't winning. Yeah, it's <laughs> <fast>. <laughs> that shit was amazing. It was the equivalent of. Those forum posts like, yo, if they had those magical gloves, it hey, could have changed. <laughs> <laughs> if he had that Mario star, we could have seen something different. Oh my goodness, he was erasing monsters face with them punches. Yeah, he was like, you know, it, it, like it was like I was cringing. Like I, I don't usually cringe in the fights, but this for the ma- this this for the mouth clean punches those two were laying each other was just it, it, it was like it was it was uncomfortable to watch after a while. But it's like them two. Nah, them I needed more blood and gore. Nah, it was perfect. <laughs> I needed my damn um. What's that show off of Amazon? The uh, in, in, Invincible. Invincible. <laughs> That's the shit. I did. Nah, nah. LB is on his body, man. Shit, he's just like, I need someone's eye to pop out. <laughs> uh, and actually, it almost looked like someone did. Monster's eye, like his eye was wide open, like he saw a fucking ghost because he had double vision. That's why. That's the reason why his eye was wide the fuck open. On one of those shots so <laughs> basically punches anywhere near your eye you do not know what the end result might be yeah. that's also a fact so protect your then, eyes if that you can and then yeah, you, might fuck fuck around, around. you might, might fuck around and look like Shawn Michaels you fucking drew me eyes <laughs> yeah, <cock eye. laughs> but uh, another fight on there though that also is not, that might actually be that's also going under the radar too is the co-main uh, one that that pilot was bringing up earlier, Subriel Mateus, of who has a lot of infamy as he was involved in a unfortunate ring death um, a couple years back um, against Max Dadeshev, which unfortunately, which was on the undercard of uh, Nakatani and Teofimo Lopez. Weren't you at that one? Was that? Weren't you at that fight? No, I wasn't. At, I was going to be at that fight, but I think I changed my mind. <laughs> oh, damn. I swear, like, yo, that year Pat was at every motherfucking fight. Yeah, no. I, I was I was thinking about it, but I was just... But I think it was either because I <clears throat> traveled. I think I went to Shakur Stevenson. I just didn't want to travel so soon. I think that's part of the reason why. The motherfucker so, was touring. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but unfortunately, yeah, Mateus, though, unfortunately, it was a brutal fight that ended up with the death of 
dying uh, yeah. shortly after the fight. Uh, R.I.P. That was a tough ass fight, man. It was though. But then, like, dude, I mean, but then dude, though, like I said, the dude is a, I don't, don't want to say murderous puncher, but his punching is, he, 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 with, with, with the exception of one hiccup, and I think it was, it was like, it was a fight shortly after that unfortunate, um, the unfortunate ring lift where he, where he got upset on an undercard, undercard. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know he, he, he bounced back too, because, uh, you know, his last fight that he faced Malik Hawkins, who was also a fellow undefeated prospect, and brutalized that guy. Brutalized him, yeah. Yeah, until the ring doctor had to step in. So, like, you know, Matias is like, you know, 16 and 1 with 16 knockouts. Like, you know, Puerto, Puerto Rico might have one in him, but it depends what his temperament, how he keeps his temperament. He's facing another Kazakh prospect, one that I've sort of heard of before. He's, he's mostly fought out of the, the Montreal scene. Um, Batir Chukimbeov, like they always have these crazy names until you get them in the ring, and then you see like, okay, that's Batir, like he knows how to fight. <laughs> that's how you, that's how you start, that's how you start referring to them. And he's like, <laughs> and he's eighteen and zero with fourteen knockouts. So that one is a sleeper fight. You just, like, that one may actually might turn into a, like a, a shootout of some sort. Sound like a real shootout. Yeah, like I mean, anyone anyone from Kazakhstan, like you know, like they, they got something. They always have something. And so official- PDC coming back with a, a vengeance now. Like, you get a, just a card starting at fucking 10 o'clock and shit. Yeah, and this one, and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I don't know why they're starting that shit at 10 o'clock, but I mean, but funny thing is too, I got, I have a cookout to go there today, so I, so hit, hit that start late, I'll be able to make it in time for it. So, hey, it works out in the end. Stop. And official scorecard box is saying, you know, I mean, yeah, he knows, Matias, Jukan Bayov is going to be fired. And he said, Jukan Bayov also killed an opponent in the amateurs, and he's not kidding. So, damn. <laughs> yeah, if you kill somebody in the damn. amateurs, that means you, you, you're you doing something. <laughs> Man, so you kill it really says, says, Wow. It really says a lot where they tell him, be like, yo, this man caught a body. <laughs> Some black <laughs> Air Force activity right now. <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, but, but honestly, this fight, like that fight, could possibly steal the shine from the main event. Because I mean, like you have two. I mean, I've seen Juke, I've seen fights. Juke, I watched a couple on YouTube. Like Duke can punch. Duke can fight. Honestly, that's a Ring City uh, USA type of main event. To be honest. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a co-main. Because you know, Matthias is going to bring it. Matthias is, is definitely. Yeah, Matthias is definitely going to bring it. That, that's for that's for yeah. damn sure. You know, he's gonna so, bring everything: the kitchen sink, the damn dishwasher, the microwave. Yeah, and and I think it's also an limiter. I, I forgot for which sanction and body too. I think it's I think it's WBA. I think. Ooh. Yeah. So I mean, so yeah, don't sleep enough. The and then the opener is one Gary Antoine Russell. You know he'll he, you know he'll be facing the guy that should have gotten the victory over Broner in his last fight, Giovanni Santiago. You know, also, so, one of those if he if he beats the guy, you know, if he, if he looks better than Broner, then you know that's his little come up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, 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 I, and I I think we all said it too. Like after Giovanni, you know, he gave Broner a pretty tough fight, and I, I thought he beat him. You know, but I was like, yeah, Showtime's definitely. Gonna, we all say that yeah, Showtime's definitely going to bring him back for sure. At best, that fight, and I'm a Broner fan, but at best, that fight was like a draw for him. Mm-hmm. He didn't really look too, and it was a, it was a mid ass fight too. Yeah, man. it was, and you know Broner. In fact, that Broner acted like you know he he did some sort of like like he poured, he, he did a clinic on there was pissing me off because he was still talking. He was <laughs> there's a whole bunch of Broner. He was so happy to win. Yeah, because I mean yeah, I mean it had been like four years or some shit. Like yeah, he was pissing me off too because I was like yeah, put him on the trailer and I guess a jobber so he can knock him out. And- yeah, because like, you know what? I mean, that is actually the perfect promotion for someone like Bro for Bro and a Triller. The bronze boner. <laughs> bronze boner. Shut up, Sergeant. I've been looking at the TV like, look at that. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. But yeah, so- yeah, definitely. Um, that, honestly, this card is damn near as good as the fucking Neri Fedoro and like, like, like man, when you really like when Showtime did the little, you know, the fight schedule, these, you know, a lot of these fights we had the little 
episode of Biden, we talked about it, and it was like, yeah, this is a good fight. This goes about saying this. But when now, when you do the actual damn episode about the card, you realize, like, man, damn, this is a really good fucking boxing card. Yeah, it's it, it's quality. And, show, and Showtime, like, especially after, after Showtime, like, last year was, you know, Showtime last year was kind of trash. You know, in 2019, they were really underperforming. You know, so it's like I mean, so yeah, I mean, they did their thing. Like they they redeemed themselves with the schedule, and like, but it's, 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 the unfortunate thing is the Showtime cards are not getting the ratings though. Like the like the fights that they air for the most part have been great, have been good to great. But yeah, time, but this is the thing, man, and it's funny you mention that because like we could almost we not gonna go on a rant on that, but mm-hmm. I honestly feel like Showtime took too long to bring these level matchups, and it's like I think. Boxing is low key passing them by a little bit. Yeah. Cause remember it started with the Broner card. The Broner card didn't even get no fucking eyes on it. Hell no. Yeah. And this is and, and Broner Yeah, Broner is known for getting like ridiculous T V ratings. No Broner, matter what. No matter what. I don't care who else is fighting. I don't care if it's NBA playing, fucking uh Tupac hologram, I don't give a fuck. Niggas be watching Broner. So when that ain't happening, I'm like, hmm. And now this nigga, this is, I'm so, <laughs> Figgy and, um, this, uh, Neri and, um, Figaro, I'll put both their names together. Mm-hmm. Neri and Figaro, <laughs> a, a great card right there. Mm-hmm. Two guys, punchers, exciting sounds, that shit ain't do nothing. So yeah. it's like, man, I don't know, I think they kind of took too long to, to, to feed the people what they want, and... Everybody is like just paying attention to these other cards, and when it comes to PBC Showtime, it's like eh, people making it seem like it's HBO now. Like, yeah, okay. it's, it's unfortunate too because because they're really bringing it, you know. So it's yeah. like, I mean, you I, can't I, I, be going the whole fucking years and providing people bullshit matchups though, right? Yeah, so, like, and it's, it's, it's even though it doesn't even look like even PBC is even putting the type of push behind it like they like they should like you you put you put out this wonderful schedule like promote this shit a little bit damn you know but yeah uh, but boxing not being promoted like that you know we'll, we'll do our part but yeah you know but yeah, save the world yeah but we're telling you right now like this 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 it's a quality card so if y'all listening or hear this later like yeah like tune in on uh, tune in Saturday night for it. Like, I mean, it, it, depending you on... the you know, whole day to get all your errands and bullshit out the way, chill with your girl, yeah. and play, play basketball, go to the gym, do what the fuck, eat your meal, and 10 o'clock, tell everybody fuck off so you can watch some fights. Yeah, like, uh, like, like I said, because, like I said, I mean, if you watch the figure Figueroa card, you know, and it was heat from, you know, it was heat from the beginning to end, this, this, this card has the same vibe. Because, you know, like I said, the, you know, the other Gary Russell, he's itching. Like, I mean, here's another one I think PBC is under, under promoted to. And that dude is a talent. But, um, it, it's, it, this has got a more international vibe. The Neri Figueroa was like Mexican. It was Mexican vibe, yeah. Yeah. You know, this, this is like World Peace Day. I mean, World Fade Day or something. <laughs> World Fade Day. <laughs> okay, we got it. Uh, oh, Bali, we got the mayor, we got it. Uh, Gary Russell, we got everybody. It's like, okay, we got that United Nations appeal. Okay. Yeah, every, everyone's everyone's represented. So yeah, definitely like stay tuned. I just hope more than seventeen people watch the motherfucker. But okay. Yeah, you know, like I, I, honestly, I want to see this thing because I know like the average like rating has been like somewhere like two seventy five and three hundred, which for which isn't really shit though. I mean, that's like, it's an unfortunate number, you know. And you and you see all this bullshit like on Fox get all a million plus to Fox, and then you know you 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 have people watch it and they, they get exposed to some horrid horrid fights on there. So it's it's fucking weird. Um, you know, but yeah, definitely tune in and then, you know, we have...